following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. I'm sorry. Testing one, two. My bad. All right. Good morning, Al. You got me, pal. I apologize. Somehow that mic button got hit. Apologies, folks. And uh, I am back. Hopefully we got me now. Good morning, everybody. An important day. It is Wednesday. It is Fed Day. And uh, we have a historic day. Let me make sure you got me here. Got me? I think so. Right? Shame on me for hitting that sound button. Okay, I appreciate it. We're back. It's 9.08 in the morning. We got 22 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we have markets in positive territory. We come into a Fed decision expected this afternoon. Pretty historic day as they begin cutting. All the expectations are they're either going to go by 25 or they're going to go by 50, though. That is what is so interesting about this afternoon. They're talking about it in the tires den. They're talking about whether they're going to go 25, they're going to go 50. What I find most interesting myself is expectations are the market thinks they're going to go 50. Bond market thinks they're going to go 50. It's going to be remarkable to see the explanation, for lack of a better term, that Chairman Powell goes with, whether he goes for 25, whether he goes for 50. I'm sure he's going to be talking about being data dependent down the line. But boy, you look at this chart, right? Didn't even plan it. You just pull up the S&P, you go back a, a year, you put it on a daily, it auto defaults to go back a year. And you're telling me this is a market that looks like we need to have a dramatic 50 basis point cut versus 25, right? That's where my brain has a little bit difficulty accepting that 50 is a necessary step from the Fed at this point. I mean, we're pushing almost all time highs, whether you're in the S&Ps. You're up by 7 points, 5707. NASDAQ 100, you're about 1,000 points off the all-time highs that we made in early July. But nonetheless, you're back up to almost 20,000 on the futures. NASDAQ 100, up by 49 points this morning, 19,725. You get the Dow in record territory. How about 42,000 on the futures, 42,084, up a tenth of a percent. Russell in the negative this morning at 2227. How about crude? Trading lower yet again. Got to love cheap prices at the gas pump. Crude trading down 66 cents at 69.30 this morning. Gold, little volatility in the overnight session for gold. Check it out. I was up early this morning. Uh, went back to bed, thankfully. But yeah, I saw gold when I was up. Check my checked my phone. I was in bed early last night at like nine o'clock. Woke up at four o'clock. Was watching my phone. I was intrigued. I said, what's the market doing? Is it getting ready? I said, ah, gold's pulled back a little bit. You're down at 25.96. Well, we're up a bit again. We're back above 2600. 2605 this morning, and you jump to notes and bonds, and what do we got? We've got a little bit of lower price and higher yield right now. I mean, all things considered, marginal moves. You're down by six ticks at 115.05 right now. That's putting the 10-year yield at 3.67. It is up almost five basis points. We're at 3.62. When I was doing the program yesterday morning, when we were trading at about 115.17, we're at 115.06. But boy, you back this thing up, right? It has been quite a run from the lows of April. We're up, yeah, basically eight full points in the tenure. Imagine that, right? You could have bought an item that cost $107 and you made $8. You made almost 7% on your money in the span of about five months, 
by buying a 10-year treasury. But guess what? That 10-year treasury was yielding about 5% when you bought it in April, and it's now yielding about 3.65%. Quite a run. A lot factored into this market, and we're going to get into it, man. We jump over to the dollar index, DXY. 100.77. I mean, so many of these charts, right? It would make sense pushing critical areas, whether you talk about the dollar bumping up against weakness, okay? You talk about the tenure bumping up against higher levels, for sure. Market at higher levels as well. Everything priced for lots of cuts, and we get to find out. Today is the day. All right, we jump around. I was watching this video earlier. It's actually a video at the top of the Wall Street Journal. And I just paused it on some of the charts they have because they're intriguing. It's about a five and a half minute video. If you do have a journal subscription, I encourage you to check it out. Just some interesting here, but it is remarkable how far, far we've come, right? Look at that inflation, man. This is the inflation numbers, personal consumption expenditure, which is what the Fed prefers. That is their preferred inflation gauge. You have all items and then you have the core number, which was a little bit lower, right? And has remained actually a little bit hot as crude has dropped in prices dramatically. But boy, it's been quite a run, folks. Quite a run indeed. And it's remarkable to think that we're two and a half years after they started hiking. They started hiking in March of 2022. And if you remember where the S&P was, okay, the reason why I bring it up is because, yeah, it traded a little bit lower into the first cut. So, just remembering, oh, no, that's not the market. I was going to say, wait a second. Yeah. So we got the first cut, and the market got a little bit of a reprieve. I remember this because it was, boy, like, what a head fake, man, in this market, right? We got the first cut. The market traded up on the week of March 28th to about 4,500, and then it was, see you, wouldn't want to be you, traded down to 3,600. You make a low of 3,500 later in the year in October. But that's when they began those cuts you got one little pop after they began which is remarkable and then the market figured out i think how aggressive the cutting cycle was going to be look at this chart absolutely remarkable on a weekly basis that we sit at 5709 bumping up against all-time highs and the arguments being made that the economy's in trouble and the fed needs to come with 50 basis points i was having a discussion with jacob yesterday and we were talking about 50 or 25 right it's the the amazing part about it is Yes, there's a right and a wrong answer, and that will be revealed in hindsight, right? But there's no automatic answer by the data, because you can make very legitimate cases in both situations. Does does the Fed really need to be as high as five and a quarter percent right now with where the inflation numbers are? I mean, look at these inflation numbers. Does the Fed have to still be where they are when they were hiking, when the numbers were up here? Probably not. But what I try and wrap my head around, right, is that if Things are accelerating so quickly that they have to go 50. Why didn't they go 25 six weeks ago? What has turned in the data that has caused that 50 be, to be, and I just don't see it, man. I just don't. You know, yeah, you can say there's weakening, but not to the case of 50. And we get to find out. We get to find out at 2 o'clock today. We got a press conference at 2.30 today. We'll air that live right here on TFNN, folks. Don't miss that one. Live programming all day. And, yeah, it is quite a market, man. It is Fed Day. And as we jump over, that's what the market's thinking, at least right now. Two to one probability. Right to the right to the decimal point, folks. You round it up. 67%. The market says they're going 50. 33% says they're going 25. We'll talk some more about it. We'll take a look at some equities. Don't go away. It's Fed Day, folks. Historic day. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Markets in positive territory. All the markets higher. We got the Russell right now, the only one negative by one point. As we mentioned, historic day coming into Fed decision. 2 p.m. Eastern time today. We'll air that press conference live at 2.30. And, yeah, when you jump around. So we're going to talk a lot about this. Now, it's interesting. I was talking about the journal, right? They got a couple cool charts that pop up here. They're normal charts that we've all seen. But, boy, you check out that one. Quite the hiking cycle, right? Begins in March of 2022. This is the effective federal funds rate. You are now at a range between five and a quarter to 5.5%. You just call it the lower bound if you want. Fed's at about five and a quarter. And yeah, it's been sitting up there for some time. Started that hiking cycle in March of 2022. And yeah, today is the day, folks, that we cut. And the only question is whether we do it by 25 or 50. Uh, interesting article from Bloomberg over here talking about, you know, it is intriguing that we're coming out of, this is not the same Hear my words. It's not this. It's not the same this time, right? That's the red flag of all red flags. But what is intriguing is we're coming out of a cycle where interest rates were so low for so long that when the Fed begins to cut here, it's not going to have the same effect that it always has historically. One great example they talk about in this article here is that mortgage markets' historical sway dulled as the Fed gears up to ease. And that's because historically, when the Fed begins to cut rapidly, at least refinances, right? That makes sense. Anyone's going to come in if you get it and just refinance that mortgage when it's a risk-free proposition that allows you to lock in a lower interest rate, et cetera. The problem, though, everybody's already got a low interest rate mortgage, right? <laughs> Pretty much. And I'm actually shocked at how low a percentage they choose in here. But nonetheless, everybody's got a pretty good interest rate overall. Over half of U.S. homeowners locked in super low 
rate mortgages when borrowing costs reached historic lows during the pandemic. So even if the Fed reduces rates by two percentage points from here, it would not be enough to spur a significant wave of refinances, according to Bank of America. That diminishes, okay? And then what you get is you got mortgage-backed security portfolio managers historically need to hedge their holdings, which they often do by buying treasuries, okay? And you got what they call the lock-in effect here. The lock-in effect is pretty big this time. And that's because people are already locked in. They're already locked into the low interest rates. So even as the Fed cuts, now here's what I will say, though, is that that equity in their homes has been trapped for the last two or three years, right? People have been trapped in their houses for the last two or three years, as in the inability to move. You can't get another mortgage at this interest rate that we're at right now. You don't want to give up that mortgage rate. There's no reason to give up that mortgage rate unless you have to, folks, because you're giving it up for nothing. The bank just gets like a free lottery win when anybody turns in their mortgage that's paying 4% and they need to refinance at 6% and they give up 20 to 30, you know, 25. You might have refinanced five years ago. And guess what? You need some equity. You need to get equity out of the house. You decide to refinance, you refinance at 6%. Don't do that if you don't need to. Right. You can add a home equity line of credit. You can do a variety of things. But if it gets back down to a similar area, even though you're not technically saving on the refinance itself, you are able to access that equity, which is going to be interesting how that happens. OK, so typically when interest rates decline, mortgage backed security investors receive more prepayment as homeowners refinance, causing the duration of their portfolios to decline. OK, anticipating this, money managers hedge their mortgage debt by purchasing bonds, including treasuries or using derivatives with similar exposure. The reverse is true. Overall, the effect of these measures, known as convexity hedging, is to exacerbate moves in treasury yields by adding to the buying when prices are rising and magnifying the selling when prices are falling. In 2003, you had this happen. Uh, treasuries as benchmark yields surged 1.5 percentage points in two months, but now the effects look to be muted. Here it is. 64% of single-family mortgages have interest rates of roughly 4% or lower. Two out of three. Well below the 30-year mortgage rates of 6.2%. 6.2, right? Yeah, the vast majority of bond, mortgage bonds owned by the Fed, okay, also carry low rates, so there's scant risk that the central bank, which must redeploy any MBS paydowns above a certain cap into treasuries, will be on the receiving end of big payments, so you're going to have less hedging. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting article when you look at it. It's just one factor that's going to unwind today, right? What's going to happen to housing prices? What's going to happen to automobile purchases? I was talking to my mom this morning, just talking about it, and she says, you know, great question. Is is 25 like, if they cut by 25, is that really going to be a big difference in the market? And no, no, right? 25 is not going to be the big difference. Where do they go from here? What's the trend? What does that do? Is that going to affect prices in terms of, you know, they start cutting rates, so the prices of groceries are going to go back up? No, not necessarily. But theoretically, right, theoretically, all of that trickles down. As in, if they cut rates from 6%, well, let's say 5 and a quarter right now, to, and I just... You know, let's just say they cut a full percentage point. They're never going to. But yes, that would automatically allow housing prices to go up because everybody can afford a little bit more. There'd be greater demand. You might have a little bit more supply, too, which is the interesting fact in housing. But it's not like that same equation happens if you're going to go to the store and buy groceries, right? If you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy some strawberries and the Fed cuts by one percentage point, does that change tomorrow? The price of strawberries? No, it doesn't. But remember that theoretically, the fact that you can now finance a home for a cheaper price, the fact that you can now finance a car for a cheaper price, the fact that you can now have a credit card that has a lower interest rate, all of those may come into the fold that, yes, you now have more buying power. Everybody has more buying power with a lower interest rate. As a result of having more buying power, there was more demand. As a result of more demand, what's going to happen? the price of goods could go up. And that's what the Fed, that's why the Fed has held off for so long. And we get to find out today, and it's going to be an interesting one for sure. We get to mortgage rates. 
on the day that the Fed's going to be cutting. We're talking mortgage rates, and yeah, dropped to a two-year low ahead of the Fed rate cut. Contract rate fell 14 basis points, the seventh weekly decline. And that number out there, 6.15%. You check out the charts in terms of where we are. This is your contract rate. We were almost at 8%. We're now down at 6%. You're below anywhere we were coming into basically September of 2022, a couple, couple years. Mortgage applications to purchase a home, you see a little bit of an uptick, right? And refinances, though, well, that is an undeniable uptick on the refinance level. And it would make sense because who's refinancing at 8%, right? God bless you. I mean, you're probably just in a crisis situation. You have to refinance. You have to access the equity in your house. You have no other alternative. Those things happen. But now, 6% isn't that bad. You can always refinance again, right? We're in the realm here. And, you, and it's been long enough as well that people are now in those interest rates, in those mortgages. I mean, it's remarkable. COVID was... Five years ago in March, COVID was five years ago in March, folks. We're four and a half years post-COVID. So everybody who got those mortgages, right? You've been dealing with that for four or five years, man. Build, people build debt. They need to access that equity. You might need to have a renovation. It's Fed Day, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open on a historic Fed day, and we got Apple shares trading positive by about six tenths percent back to 218. Pretty remarkable the news coming out with Apple, man. Held up very well, I'd say, when you talk about the 
16 plus you have the analysts come out on early monday morning which is the reason for this slide from 222 down to 213 talking about the the initial sales for the 16 the apple iphone 16 over the weekend like 13 percent below what they had been for opening weekend for the iphone 5 orders you catch a little bit of a bid this morning with the market we're up by about eight tenths percent now it is remarkable that you know when i bring this over Thanks for my producers for staying on that sound. We're still working through a few things on the studio, folks. It's Wednesday. We made that move last week. But, boy, moving an entire sound studio in 24 hours. I mean, the amount of wires back there, they're doing a great job getting us back up and kicking. Um, this one from CNBC. Now, this is out this morning. I talked about a similar article in Bloomberg a day or two ago. But it is intriguing when you talk about Nobody cares about battery life and cameras. They do. They always do. They don't care about battery life and cameras on a super cycle. What they care about is Apple intelligence. Okay. And again, I mean, there's not, you know, the story writes itself as in without Apple intelligence, the, the impetus is just not there. The fear of missing out, right? I had a little bit of a fear of missing out. I keep saying it. Here's my iPhone 12, which was a juggernaut four years ago before Tommy was born. And, um, I had a fear of missing out. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm getting ready to upgrade my phone. This is probably a great time to do it. We're right on the verge of a dramatic increase of performance of the iPhone. And yeah, it's not happening. They say, so there's reasons to be excited. A few of the new, a few of the new AI features like changes to Siri, photo editing, and the option to have AI rewrite text for you will launch in beta in October. More additions, such as Apple's image and emoji generator, okay? More personal Siri responses and integration with ChatGPT will come later. It's not here yet. Be careful on Apple, folks. It is not here yet, okay? And yeah, they talk about the battery. They talk about the lens. Videographers are going to love the 4K, 120 frames per second recording. Yeah. But that's not going to be a super cycle. Okay, it has the best battery life. Yeah. The A18 Pro processor paired with a large battery, 33 hours of video playback up from 29 hours. Nobody needs 29 hours if you can plug in at night. And listen, I get it. Everybody loves battery. Battery is life. Okay, for sure. But you get the point, right? Apple Intelligence, they're not here yet. The super cycle is not here. Be careful, folks. I mean, the other one, I was talking about the iWatch, the Apple Watch. I keep calling it the iWatch. I think it's just called the Apple Watch, right? Um, they were talking about that yesterday. I love the Apple Watch as well. I have a Series 6. I think they're out with the 10 right now. They're talking about the battery life on the Apple Watch as well. Folks, the, the battery life on an Apple Watch has always been able to operate at least 18 hours which for a watch in particular, okay, you don't wear an Apple Watch to bed. Maybe some people do because it can monitor your sleep. I did wear it to bed a couple times because I wanted to see how it monitored my sleep, which it does, which is pretty cool. But I don't like wearing a watch to sleep. I don't think many people do. And so nobody wears it to sleep. So the battery life on an Apple Watch has always been able to do what it needs to do. Anything else, the utility value of the Apple Watch being able to be used for greater than one day is very close to zero because people just charge their watches at night. I don't see how they do the big numbers, man. I'm in no rush to go buy a 16 plus right now. And I'm telling you, man, like three weeks ago, I was jazzed to get a new phone. First one in four years, right? All the bells and whistles of Apple intelligence. And it's just not happening. So be careful for Apple. You're positive yet again. S&Ps roll over a bit. We check in on some of the other equities. Amazon shares down by about three tenths to cent percent today. We put this back on a daily. You jump over to Microsoft, down about four tenths percent right now from Microsoft. Google shares slightly in the positive. Meta slightly in the positive as well as they're bumping up against all time highs from Meta shares. You jump over to Tesla, down about three tenths percent right now. Netflix shares NFLX down about eight tenths percent, trading above seven hundred dollars. You talk about it, man. And we check in on notes and bonds in the dollar as we wait the Fed. Yeah, a little bit of a pullback. Maybe this is the market adjusting to the fact that you know what we're not we're not going to go 50 just yet. Maybe this is the final little. And then you know I'm exaggerating to a degree, folks. As in maybe you're getting a little bit of lower price, higher yield in the 10 year. Okay, which could point to the fact that the yields aren't going to drop quite as dramatically as we draw it. And look at this. Look at this. 
It's amazing, man. Remember, we just pulled this up. We just pulled this up 10 minutes ago, and it was a 67 to 33 percent probability they were going 50. The market's recoiling. We're now at a 60-40. 59-41 are the odds here. And that's, you know, the bond market's huge, man. When you see a pullback coming into today, right, as in lower price, higher yield, coming into Fed Day, I cannot wait to hear what Chairman Powell has to say. I just can't wait to hear what he has to say to rationalize either decision, right? Is he going 25 or is he going 50 and why? And if he goes 50, he's got a lot of explaining to do. If he goes 25, it's the natural conversation of, hey, the time has come. We're going to be data dependent. We're starting here, and we're going to let the data guide us on how fast and how far we go. If he goes 50, he can't make that case, right? It's harder to make, at least, to put it that way. All right, what else do we got pulled up here? We talked about mortgages. Everything's fed. Yeah, we'll keep it on housing. Look, at, it's absolutely remarkable, right, that you have mortgage rates dropping to a two-year low. You have housing starts increasing to the fastest pace since April. Beginning home construction increased almost 10% last month to 1.36 million annualized rate, the fastest since April. Okay, the median estimate was looking for 1.32. They come in above that number. Overall building permits, which is a better indication of future construction, of course, rose 5% to 1.48 million annualized rate. Single-family permits increased to a four-month high. New construction of single-family homes increased nearly 16% to an annualized almost million pace, the fastest in three months. Yeah. Builders are awaiting a sustained pickup in demand to help work down an elevated number of unsold homes. Those builders, right? Mortgage rates have fallen to the lowest level since 2022. But yeah, they got some work to do. In anticipation, in, in, in anticipation of an improving housing market, investors have favored, yeah, U.S. home builders, to put it lightly, man. Starts jumped 15.5% in the south a month after Hurricane Barrow led the slowest pace of construction in the region since the mid-2020. Home building in August also rose in the Midwest and the West. I tell you, folks, <clears throat> in middle of Florida, Lakeland, Florida, which is where I am, they are building plenty of houses, man. We got developments everywhere. They're popping up houses. I mean, they, we got developments of 1,700 houses going up, 500 houses going up. They're just everywhere. They got the land out here. We're close enough to a big city, Tampa. And um, I've talked about it as well. The, the cool part about it is the houses they're building right now, folks, I'm going to pull up one of the, the housing developments during this break, all right? We stay during this break. I'm going to pull it up just... They're great houses at affordable prices. You know, everyone is giving Florida a lot of grief in terms of, yeah, Florida is not as cheap as it used to be by a long shot, man. But guess what? Depending on where you go, okay, there's still a heck of a deal. You're talking about brand new homes, 350 grand, something like that around here. Uh. All right, folks, stay tuned. S&Ps, roll negative markets in the red. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. It is 9.42 a.m. It is Fed Day, and we got the markets chopping around. We're basically flat right now. S&P is positive by one. You jump over to the dollar index. You put this a little bit of longer-term chart, and look at where we are, right? You talk about a critical area at about 100, 172, positive by 15 pennies. And to talk about some of the action, we got a treat, folks. We got our man Teddy Cakes Dad on the line. If you haven't checked out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report, folks, you can check it out right under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. You can subscribe for $97 a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You see it right up there. Uh, you can't go wrong. And, boy, we got action all over the place in this market. And, Teddy, talk about interesting days of interesting days. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so where do we kick things off, man? Of course, we got uh, the main event at 2 p.m. Eastern time today, press conference. I guess 2.30 would probably be the main event. They're both. Um, why don't we start off with the Fed? What do you think? What do you, how, you, how are you looking at this afternoon? What are your expectations? Um, what's on your mind as we got a pretty historic day as they begin cutting off of a pretty historic hiking schedule? Yeah, I think that, you know, the quarter point is pretty much uh, almost a – Sure thing, I would say. Uh, as far as anything beyond that, I really doubt that that's going to happen. I would be surprised if they do a half a point right off the bat. Um, that would be, I think, a very, very aggressive, um, especially in the midst of the fact that we still have inflation numbers that are not looking really that great. You know, so um, I think that uh, that's the way you should play it. We're not going to be much action until it probably, um, you know, obviously after the number. I would say stay away from anything until after then, and. Uh, there's also the uh, Jap uh, Japanese BOJ also their rate decision is going to be tomorrow, which is going to be oh, late right. our time. That's going into Friday's trade. So remember, the Asian markets open up around five, six o'clock Chicago time. So their rate decision won't be until um, what is it around? I think uh, what is it uh, around nine thirty our time, Central Standard Time, okay. so ten thirty your time. Uh, okay. So expect to maybe see some action in the yen. A little bit this afternoon, I would be skittish. I would stay away from that trade um, just because you have the BOJ rate decision looming on Friday, uh, which would be their Friday or Thursday evening. Uh, now, as far as are they going to do something, I don't think that they will. I think they're going to stay flat, but I think that that trade is going to be very skittish until after that number. So, I, And also with oil now kind of stabilizing where it's at. You know, you have OPEC that just made the agreement to uh, start cutting production again until after, no until after November 1st. So that means that global oil prices are definitely probably going to probably found a, a floor. 
if you will. You know, so unless we really start pumping, you know, at extreme levels over the next couple of weeks, I can't see that crude oil would really take much more of a hit. You know, we may test the lows, maybe spike a little bit below it. But um, unless they really unwind, which, I, like I said, fundamentally, I don't see that happening. The oil trade is probably off the table with the U.S. dollar yen. Um, now, should oil obviously bang new lows and get down towards the 50s? You know, which I don't see that happening. I think you could see downward pressure on the U.S. dollar yen, especially with our rate hike coming today and with the potential of at least one to two more, depending on what they do, um, obviously, today. You know, if they did a half a point, I think, I think it would be very, a big surprise and a shock if they did another half a point again in the future at the next meeting. You know, maybe they would still do a quarter point or maybe they want to shock the system with a half a point today and say, OK, we're doing this. We're still on a cutting bias, but we're not going to probably do anything for the next one to two meetings for the rest of the year. You know, you might see some kind of speak but like that because you do have inflation numbers coming out. You know, I mean, sure. if, if, if we start to go back in the other direction, especially shockingly, you know, I mean, unemployment claims are coming out tomorrow as well. You know, if those come out significantly lower, you know, um, that's going to be a, have an impact, especially if that starts to trend over the next couple of weeks as we get into October. And if that unemployment number actually goes down, you know, with, you know, more of a trend like that continuing into the holidays, which it's very possible you have holiday hiring that's going on now, you know. So that's a number that you have to watch. And remember, the Fed wants high unemployment. They don't want low unemployment. So if, if that number starts ticking down, as well as inflation prices going up, you know, how much is the Fed going to cut? Because then it's going against their whole platform they've been running on, you know. So I'd be very mindful yeah. of that. So, um, but yeah, that's the trade to watch would be the U.S. dollar yen. Um, and then maybe the euro a little bit on Friday because you have consumer confidence for them, which will be out at our nine o'clock our time, which is right before their markets close. So there may be a Friday morning into like early afternoon trade in the euro. You might catch a nice move. It'll die out by the early afternoon. Um, but that may, there may be a trade on Friday for the euro U.S. dollar coming up. I appreciate the wrap up, man. I know we got so much going on. I appreciate you bringing it kind of all together, how they're all um – you know, hinging on one another. Um, at, at one point, I you, you talked about crude. You know, I was talking to my dad recently, Teddy, and I said, you know, crude, out by us. I think a gallon of gas yesterday was like 287. It was either 283 or 287, Teddy, um, mm -hmm. which was at Sam, so it's a little bit cheaper than normal. But I found myself, and then I'm in Publix, right? And uh, at the checkout, the impulse buy items at Publix for a 20 ounce bottle of soda is 259. And I <laughs> said to myself, this is bonkers. That basically sugar water, you know, is right. in there for two fifty nine. And meanwhile, you walk outside and you get almost the same exact price, a gallon of fuel, which the utility value of a gallon of fuel is like through the roof, you know, in terms of what. Sure. And so I found myself saying, OK, one of these things probably has to budge. They probably shouldn't stay the same price forever. And I don't see the price inside of Publix dropping. So maybe, you know, crude, because, you know, could that anyway, I just thought it was an interesting, you mm -hmm. know, it's like and I don't see sure. public prices really dropping. So if that's the case, where does crude go from here? And maybe seventy dollars is a little bit of a floor because I just find mm -hmm. it so remarkable that as we've driven prices up so dramatically, I was and, you know, it was one of those moments Teddy. I'm sitting in the store. I say, you know what? I'm going to have an impulse buy item today. I'm going to get myself like a diet Mountain Dew or something silly. You know, mm -hmm. you check out. And I looked down the price. I said, that's not happening, man. I am not right. spending $2.60. It costs more than a two-liter. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, said, I'll ridiculous. go buy a two-liter. I'll walk down the aisle in two seconds or something. Right. Um, right. Anyway, so it points to crude. Like, I, I, I appreciate you saying that because in my Thank head, you. I said, maybe crude's find a little bit of a floor here because with all the prices so high, you can't tell me a gallon of fuel is going to be less than what people are paying for right. a 20-ounce bottle of, you know, crappy sugar water inside and another fundamental uh, thing too is opec also wants a 70 dollar price point at least for oil so that's one of the reasons why they're cutting production so if that's nice. really their goal once again it's hard to say that if a floor is not forming right now with you know an upward bias towards at least a upper 60s towards seven or lower 70s nice we had a question and then our youtube tigers sure. den uh from one of the tigers our jeff talking about Gold, of course, and he was just asking how you think gold may react as we see rates potentially falling, right? You know, as you see, if rates are going to be cut, as we expect, um, what do you think of gold in this type of an environment? Um, actually, it depends. I would say that if you sell, see a significant sell-off in the dollar index, uh, I like gold. 
Nice. I, I think the only thing that's going to restrict the gold trade where if it does get a pullback, I would definitely look at it as a correction, a profit taking move and look for maybe like a, a, you know, three point, I don't know, 30 to 40, 50 percent. I wouldn't see if you look at the last swing low in gold to the high where where it's um, been recently, I would say you're not going to get more than a 50 percent retracement off of that, even if the dollar yeah. gets uh, really strong. We live in interesting times. Yeah. Today is an interesting day. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man, on an important day. And uh, you have a great week. We'll talk to you next All Wednesday, right. man. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back, finish up the break. Don't forget to check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report right on that newsletter tab. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by one point right now. The market anticipating four hours, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're trading right now negative by one point in the S&Ps at 56.99. All-time highs in the futures yesterday, 57.37. We had all-time highs in the Dow as well. NASDAQ right now, positive by 22. We jump around to some of the Magnificent Seven. Apple with a lift, up by 1.1%. Not sure why Apple's getting the delivered. Is it? Let's see. I'm not sure what... Uh, is sending this higher. If anybody got in the den in terms of why Apple is up more than 1% right now, because I feel like they should be facing some heat with the stories coming out with the 16, etc. Be careful out there with Apple shares. You jump over to Microsoft, 
negative six tenths percent. Amazon down by about two tenths percent right now. Meta shares flat at 536 right now. We keep our eye on the dollar. DXY up by about two tenths percent at 174. We check back in on yields. A little bit of lower price, higher yield right now. And we check back in on the Fed Watch tool. And we're back to 67.33, folks. <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? Uh, hey, we get to find out. There you go. You're at 61.39 now. About a six to four, about a one and a half to one. The market pricing in 50. I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, for the first time in a long time, not really sure what's going to happen. I mean, I hear everybody in the den, Teddy, myself, it seems like 25. But boy, a lot of market participants are pushing 50, and we get to find out what happens out there. Um, seeing this headline for those New Yorkers out there, I don't know if this is going to happen, but Trump did away with salt. And now he's saying he's the man that you need to get it back. Absolutely remarkable how it goes in politics, right? Um, the salt deduction, yeah, he did away with it. But if you want it back, he's the man that gets it done as he's courting New York voters. Um, yeah, nonetheless, politics and swing. And we got six weeks until a presidential election, man. Absolutely remarkable. Yeah. All right, we could go all day, folks, but we are going to go all day. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next. He's going to continue the conversation. Check out the Tiger Technicians Hour coming up. Don't forget about Basil's opening call, folks, as well. Have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll find out what happens. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great one. Thanks so much.